In the summer of 1944, the imminent defeat of Nazi Germany was coming closer every day, although the Germans were willing to fight until the last man. Not just the Nazi leadership realized they were losing the war, but so were their partners. Italy signed a peace treaty with the Allied powers in 1943, and in August, one year later, the Romanians, after a coup, switched sides from the Axis to the Allies. The Hungarians were still part of the Axis powers, but their regent, Miklos Horthy, had secretly entered peace negotiations with the Allies. So what do you think the Nazis did in such a dire situation? Probably not kidnap the son of the regent in order to force a halt to the negotiations and kidnap the regent himself right after. Yeah, well that's exactly what the Nazis did. The Carpathian Front in Eastern Europe was towards the end of the war, held by over a million Hungarians and German troops. But in late 1944, Hitler started to doubt the loyalty of his Hungarian allies. The Hungarian regent, Miklos Horthy, attempted to defend Hungarians against the deportation by the Nazis, whether they were Jewish or not. And Hungarian oil fields and agriculture had been exploited for years by Nazi Germany with little return. And to add to that, in August 1944, Michael I, King of Romania, led a coup against the Axis-aligned Romanian government of Ion Antonescu, after which he aligned Romania with the Allied powers. Horthy was subtly playing around with the idea of following the Romanians' example and switching sides. Now, if Horthy were to switch sides, this would leave the entire Eastern Carpathian Front open to the Soviets. After King Michael's coup in Romania, it was much easier for the Soviets to pour into the country and take over. Thus, it was of vital importance to Hitler and the Nazi high command that Hungary was to stay loyal and doubt on the Hungarian side had to be suppressed. The events in Romania aroused suspicion in Hitler that Horthy might switch sides and arrangements were made to have him removed from power. Otto Skorzeny, who had a year previously already successfully rescued Benito Mussolini in Operation Oak, was given a carte blanche. He was allowed to do anything he deemed necessary in order to dispose of Miklos Horthy. So Skorzeny had to scout the area. He traveled to Budapest disguised as a tourist, Dr. Wolf. The plan was to dispose of Horthy, but keep the Hungarian government intact, as they could not afford more domestic instability, especially because the regent Admiral Horthy was venerated by most Hungarians. If he were to be killed, there was no doubt the Hungarians would revolt against the Nazis. Right, so Dr. Wolf spent a while in Budapest inspecting government buildings and the castle on Castle Hill, which was nearly impenetrable. It was loaded with loyal troops and plenty of defenses. A frontal assault was not viable at all. Thus, a new plan had to be devised. The German military intelligence service, the Abwehr, and the intelligence service of the SS, the Sicherheitsdienst, informed Skorzeny that Horthy had already begun negotiations with the Soviet Union via two officers of Marshal Tito of Yugoslavia. Horty's son, Nicholas, was holding these secret talks. Skorzeny figured that abducting Nicholas would not only force a halt to the negotiations with the Soviets, but would provide leverage for abdication as well. Thus, a plan was devised to abduct Nicholas. The first abduction plan failed when the regent unexpectedly arrived at the apartment building where Nicholas was holding the negotiations. The attempt was aborted, but the second time, Skorzeny and his team did manage to take him. Skorzeny had the Geheime Feldpolizei, a secret military police, surround the building where the negotiations were held, and four Sicherheitsdienst agents were in the room above the one where the negotiations were taking place. Once Skorzeny gave his signal, the Geheime Feldpolizei then stormed the building, upon which Nicholas' guards opened fire. Chaos ensued, with both parties shooting at each other. Skorzeny blew the whistle three times, a signal to Fulkerson and his group to storm into action. Adrian von Fulkerson was a rather young German SS officer, only 29 at the time, working closely with Skorzeny. They stormed into action. The Sicherheitsdienst abducted Nicholas, 
while Fulkersam commandos dealt with the guards. Nicholas was bundled into a Persian carpet and flown to Germany. The next step was to deal with Miklos Horty, who held an anti-German speech on Hungarian radio following the abduction of his son. An excerpt of this radio announcement reads, Today it is obvious to any sober-minded person that the German Reich has lost the war. All governments responsible for the destiny of their countries must draw the appropriate conclusions from this fact. For as a great German statesman, Bismarck, once said, no nation ought to sacrifice itself on the altar of an alliance. Furthermore, Horty had signed an armistice with the Soviets, who were slowly but surely penetrating the European Eastern Front. As you can probably tell, the Nazis now wanted to act quick, remove Horthy, and secure the alliance of Hungary's troops. Castle Hill, the castle in which Horthy resided, was manned by 2,000 elite troops loyal to the regent of Hungary. The German division in Budapest was outnumbered and once again Skorzeny knew a full frontal assault was not a viable option. He had no intention of storming or assaulting the castle, leaving a trail of destruction and risking the possibility of losing the alliance with Hungary. Regardless, Skorzeny had to lay his trap and the German division in Budapest had to remain at their post. What followed was a cunning, bold and unorthodox special operation, one of the most impressive ones during the Second World War. Around Horthy's castle, Skorzeny had two battalions distract the Hungarian guards, while the direct assault, and assault has to be in quotation marks here, was launched through the front door. We'll get to that in a second. Skorzeny told his troops that they cannot open fire, whatever happens, unless an officer tells them they cannot open fire. Ready to launch their cunning coup, the Germans surrounded the castle hill. Around half an hour before dawn, four Tiger II tanks and a convoy of German troops under Skorzeny's command were lined up. Skorzeny was banking on the Hungarians not firing on troops who marched into the castle peacefully. A bold and reckless bluff that could completely backfire if one soldier, be it Hungarian or German, does not manage to contain his nerves. At any rate, at 5 to 6 a.m. in the morning of the 15th of October, the column made its way to the single road to the Vienna gates of the castle. The Hungarian guards let them pass, perhaps because they were fooled by the latter's confidence and aloofness, perhaps because Horthy realized that the situation was lost. Anyway, Skorzeny was through the gate and occupied the main square of the castle without a single shot being fired. The Ministry of War and the barracks each housing 1,000 elite Hungarian troops were next. The column made its way past these buildings towards the regent's palace. Once arrived, the German special units under Fulkersam made it up the staircase and a Hungarian colonel with a pistol and soldier with a machine gun that didn't get the whole don't fire memo were quickly disarmed. The German commandos threw the seized weapons into the palace courtyard as Skorzeny made his way to the commandant's office. After Fokersum informed the commandant that the entire palace hill was secure, he decided to capitulate. The next step was to make it to Horthy's throne room. While reassuring the Hungarian troops they were Habsburg cousins and they had no reason to quarrel among themselves, it was time they closed ranks to keep the red horns out. That's a literal quote from Skorzeny. Regent of Hungary, Miklos Horthy was captured and deported without weapons firing bloodshed and destruction. He was sent to the Bavarian castle where his son was kept as a prisoner as well and as such one of the most daring secret missions of World War II was successfully completed without a shot being fired. What followed after Horthy's forced abdication was the implementation of the wishes of the Nazi high command for Hungarian government. After Horthy was abducted he was forced to sign a typewritten statement that denounced the armistice and stated he would abdicate in favor of Count Ferenc Salasi, head of the Aerocross party and a staunch Nazi supporter. On the 21st of October, six days after Horthy's abduction, Salasi took over the government after Horthy nearly managed to surrender his country to the Allied powers. The result of Operation Panzerfaust and Salasi becoming head of government was a prolonging of the Second World War for Hungary. The country and Budapest had to be taken by force of arms. The majority of Hungarian battalions fought on the German side until the bitter end, 
which was at least until March 1945, when the Selazi regime was driven out of Hungary. The Battle of Budapest in December 1944 resulted in the deaths of tens of thousands of Hungarians and German soldiers, and over 35,000 civilian deaths, of which another 38,000 would perish in prisoner of war camps. While this was a brilliant secret operation by Skorzeny, it prolonged the suffering of the Hungarian people for months. Nearing the end of the war, Otto Skorzeny embarked on another special operation during the Battle of the Bulge, where German soldiers wore US and UK uniforms, causing paranoia and wreaking havoc. But that's a story for another time. Thank you for watching this video. And what is an event or person in the Second World War that you would like to know more about and perhaps see a video of? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to this channel. See you next time.